CBS News Miami. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us. I'm Nasha Sherman and welcome to CBS News Miami's 4 p.m. Quick Cast. Let's take a look at today's top stories. Clouds and a few showers are keeping tips a bit cooler today. But next weather meteorologist Cindy Pressler says record heat is on its way back. Cindy, what's going on? Yeah, I know just when you thought, oh, we were done with this really hot stuff. Good heavens, we're now into the middle part of October. But no, it looks like things are going to be changing this week. So we're going to start with the front coming back from the south. It's been sitting uh, south of Florida this week, and that is coming back, and it's going to bring a lot of moisture with it, too. Heavy rainfall Wednesday and Thursday. Yes, we could see a flooding issue on that day and then hot with record highs. That will be uh, Thursday, Friday and Saturday heading into the weekend. So let's start with the clouds. See that flow coming out of the southwest? That's the steering flow. That'll be mid to upper levels, but that's what's taking everything from the west side to the east side. So we do have some showers out there. Nothing as far as thunder. It's all just showers. Not a whole lot now over Broward County, but you head south. This is the rain that just came off the coast running from about Miami all the way down to the Ocean Reef area. These are just moderate showers, so we're not looking at some heavy rain today, but boy, the difference in the temperatures it is only 84 degrees, 81 degrees in Homestead, but uh, down to the Keys there, Key West at 87 degrees has had a little bit of sunshine, but boy, those clouds and those showers have really kept it down today, but because we have some moisture around, it still feels like it's 90 degrees, but this is nothing compared to what we're going to feel like by the time we get to the end of the week. So let's time out the rain for you. A few showers yet this evening, and again, uh, uh, spotty, not here and there, dries out overnight and then tomorrow again will bring that moisture in. So the afternoon from about three to five, maybe to seven, we're going to find a shower here and there. That'll be on Tuesday. We don't have a lot of rain on Tuesday. Still rain chances are quite low, but by Tuesday at 10 p.m., look at this. We get a cluster that's developing, at least according to this one of the models here. Wednesday, now we're going into more of a southerly flow. The frontal system is heading north, so that's where we're going to see better chances for rain, and this is the stuff that could drop heavy rain Wednesday and Thursday. Something we're going to watch for. Rain chances will be up to about 50, 60 percent by tomorrow afternoon, but again, not a whole lot. So that front is actually going to start sliding north. There's a warm front. There's your record heat on the south side of it, and that's where the moisture is going to stick around. So we're going to put 70 percent chance for rain on Wednesday, 60 on Thursday, then backs off as we head into the weekend. Uh, there's your records, near record or even beating the record as we head into the end of the week. So yes, that's summertime heat is coming back to South Florida, but next week, then we go the opposite direction with much cooler air. So we've got a lot of changes here, but for the time being, we're going to deal with a lot of rain this week and very warm temperatures. Israel strikes back. Clouds of smoke were seen rising over the Gaza skyline. It is following multiple Israeli airstrikes. In Jerusalem, sirens have gone off throughout the day, warning of incoming rockets. According to the Associated Press, a Hamas military spokesperson says it will kill a civilian hostage anytime Israel targets Gaza without warning. Crisis in the Middle East continues between Israel and Hamas. CBS News Miami's Peter Dinch was at Miami International Airport. He heard stories of survival from passengers who arrived on a flight. Many people returning to South Florida from Israel told us they were haunted and horrified by what they saw. We spoke with them here inside Miami International Airport as they arrived on a flight from Tel Aviv. They had a lot to say after more than 700 people were killed in Israel and an unknown number of Israelis were taken hostage. And you will never know what these people go through until you experience it yourself, how devastating and terrifying this all is. When families tell you that they learned that their friend died, their son died, that, and the children, children crying, wondering what's going on, why? There are rockets going off everywhere and everyone's life is in jeopardy there and for no reason. It was very frightening, very nerve wracking and very scary. People of course have been hurt badly and God bless their souls. I lost a lot of friends of my friend. People got kidnapped. And those were just some of the stories we heard from people returning from Israel. We'll have much more on that coming up tonight at 5 and 6. At Miami International Airport, Peter Dench, CBS News, Miami.
The combined death toll on both sides now exceeds 1,000. The National Security Council confirms nine Americans are among the dead. CBS News Miami's Skylar Henry is live in Washington, D.C. He has the very latest on the crisis in the Middle East. And Skylar, with the rising death toll on both sides now, over 1,000, what are rescue crews up against at this moment? Hey, now, it's good to be with you. Well, in fact, security officials are also trying to figure out exactly if there are American civilians that are hostages at the moment as well. And so they are trying to coordinate with the Department of Defense as well as uh, Israeli uh, military groups to try to see exactly what is going on at the moment. But as you in talked about it, it is a very Gaza, hostile situation orange. happening right now in Israel. So, Skylar, as far as resources go, both House and Senate lawmakers are pushing for more aid mm -hmm. to Israel, but the House can't do much without a speaker. So what more support is there going to be coming from Washington? Right. Well, that ultimately depends on if and when we see a House speaker uh, for the interim. We know that there will be additional military aid doled out from the U.S. at least uh, in the next few days, if not weeks, that is already being sent out. But the big question is uh, there needs to be more. Uh, that is uh, what we've heard from uh, military officials who have ultimately come out to say that uh, while there may be some short-term funding, they want uh, even more, uh, and that ultimately would, would require Congress to sign off on that. And as you and I both know, there is no House Speaker, and we know that uh, lawmakers will be returning back to Capitol Hill this week to vote on that, to bring up any sort of potential resolutions, how much, when that money could be sent over, that remains to be seen. But we know that lawmakers absolutely have their work cut out for them, as they not only have to vote for a House Speaker first, but then figure out what that resolution may look like next. All right. Thank you so much, Skylar, for the very latest from the yeah, Middle East. Right. Hundreds of protesters took to the streets of Fort Lauderdale. They were expressing their frustration over the attack. What started as a peaceful protest on East Sunrise Boulevard quickly escalated as emotions flared. We want to support what's going on. It's not OK what Hamas is doing. And we want to stop this, but if this is something we can do, we will do that. The people of Palestine are, try, are tired of being occupied and genocide is committed against them. People in South Florida are rallying to support those impacted. There is another rally expected this evening in Aventura at the waterway shops at 6 p.m. On CBS News Miami Morning Edition, the Council General of Israel in Miami spoke to us about the war in Israel. He said comparing population size, the number of Israelis killed in the surprise attack is equivalent to 25,000 Americans. He compared the attack to September 11th for Americans and said Israel has the right to protect itself. We want peace. We want even for the Palestinians themselves, but we cannot compromise on the security and safety of Israelis who have been abducted and, 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 and killed and massacred and raped and mutilated in their own homes. He says that he knows there will be collateral damage, but Israel needs to be able to stop Hamas. He did tell us Israel is taking precautions not to hurt civilians. And to watch that entire interview, just go to the video section on CBSMiami.com. Stay with us for more news on air and online on this escalating crisis in the Middle East. We will bring you new developments as they happen. More news when we come back. Welcome back to CBS News Miami's 4 p.m. Quick Cast. For the 39th year in a row, Miami Carnival made its way to South Florida. It is one of the biggest celebrations of. It's the culmination of music, costume, cuisine, and customs. Baby, when I tell you this is the best of the best, I shook my waist, I wind my waist, and I had a great time. Boy, when I lie, I have a blast. Thousands of people flocked to South Florida for the multi day commemoration of carnival traditions originating in the country of Trinidad, but encompassing several. Let me tell you, melting pots of culture, people from everywhere Trinidad, Jamaica, Barbados, Bahamas, and kids like all over the place. From Juve on Saturday, Saturday to the carnival parade Sunday, people from across the world convened right here. We have 22 mass bands. We have a great competition lineup. And in addition to that, we have a great show. 
Behind the celebrations is meaning. It, it brings all the Caribbean people together in one unity and it just explode the culture. And as a show of respect, this man chose to pay homage to the past. Authentic Caribbean style. The chain is a remnant and a symbol of slavery. For 39 years, people have come to Miami Carnival, unified by shared culture, looking forward to the next one. Carnival is unity and togetherness, you know, so all my friends from all over the world, I was able to see. I'm Chelsea Jones, CBS News, Miami. If you want to be a billionaire, there is still a chance. The Powerball jackpot is now over $1.5 billion. The Powerball jackpot is the fourth largest in U.S. history. You can find out if you are the lucky winner tonight during CBS News Miami at 11. The power of CBS News and the CBS News Miami stream are always at your fingertips. We're on Pluto TV and it's all free. Or find us on your favorite streaming device with the CBS News app, then click CBS News Miami. That's the CBS News Miami Quickcast. I'm Naja Sherman. Stay tuned for more news right here on CBS News Miami.